Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Now, a while ago I was asked if it was possible to do an Affinity Photo version of this Photoshop tutorial, Cloning Along a Curve by Nicole S. Young. And I've had a quick look at it and I'm going to do this, what this video is about is to try and do the same thing in Affinity Photo. Now if I come to Affinity Photo, now before I go on to looking at this, doing the cloning on the curve, I'm just doing a very quick recap of what the clone brush will do um, for those new to Affinity Photo and in photo editing in general. So I've got this picture of this camper van, which I, a little toy camper van which I took myself. And let's say for example this grill red grill down here that you you wanted to get rid of it now in affinity photo now we have something called the in painting brush tool which is this icon over here or you can just press j on your keyboard and if you could, this is probably the best option to use nowadays well your first port of cord let's say and if i brush over that grate there let the tool do its job it should pretty much get rid of that first go if not maybe second go and with a little bit more fine tuning you could get rid of that quite easily and you wouldn't sort of know it was there in the first place but let's say for example you wanted to get rid of this sort of pipe work that's going down the back here now the thing about the in painting tool is that it sort of it will take pixels from sort of around it to fill in the area that you paint over. So if I paint over this pipe going down here, it has taken some of the pixels from the window next to it. So you're not really getting rid of it, you're just sort of grabbing areas that you don't want. So let me take this history back, put it back to where it was. So this is where the clone brush tool will come in to its own. So this is the clone brush tool here and you can press um, S on the keyboard to get this tool. Now with this tool you need to select an area that you are going to clone from. So you clone the pixels from one area to another. It's a, it's a much more labor intensive than the in painting tool because you've got to do everything yourself you've got to decide where you're going to clone from but because you're doing it and not the program you should get better results now for this i'm going to leave the opacity at 100 percent but the hardness i've reduced down to 16 percent and i'm going to clone from this flat area here over this pipe work and first thing you need to do is press Alt on your keyboard and this will give you the area that you are going to select from. So I'll select from that area there and then when I start painting on here as you can see, I hope you can see there's a little behind the circle that is the brush head there is a little cross here, which is where it is sampling from. So you can keep picking a new place to sample from and blend them in better. And I, I, I could try this dark area on this side. So I press Alt again, sample from this area and try and blend this in a bit better. Now I freely admit I'm not doing a great job of this because I'm not really taking my time but hopefully you will see what it is I'm trying to do and that I'm getting rid of that pipe work and with a bit more finesse and effort on my part I could have cloned that out better and you wouldn't have known that that sort of pipe work was there to start with. So it is more labour intensive than the in-painting tool but hopefully you can see what is happening and how you would use it. 
So let me shut this down. I don't really need this anymore. And we're going to move on to this image because the original Photoshop tutorial they use a potter's wheel. So I'm going to use the same similar image for this tutorial. And the whole point of this is using the clone tool on a curved edge like this. So I got this image from Unsplash and if you just type in Potter's Wheel that similar image is virtually the first, second, third one that's on the list. So what I've then done is I've got a a sort of scratch mark which I've made to put on to the wheel and this is what I'm going to try and clone out so hopefully you won't notice that there was ever a scratch there so let me do a merge visible so I don't, those bottom layers are only there for showing you what's going on and let me just move this up to about here so we want to clone out this scratch so we're going to come to the let's first of all let's have a look at the in painting tool I mean in a lot of cases it may work okay sometimes it, it's a bit hit and miss sometimes so let's just try and see what that would look like admittedly you probably wouldn't do it all in one hit like that but as you can see it struggles because those lines are now straight whereas the lines of the pot are curved. So let me undo that. So we'll come to the clone brush tool and you have the similar sort of problem here in the fact that this is a curved line and if I try let's try let's try this one here, this band here. So if I press Alt and sample from there if I move down so if I carried on as you can see that line is carrying on in a straight line and no longer matches the curved line that was there so let me press ctrl and z a few times to go back so gone so far back I've got rid of the merge visible right so what we're going to need to do is to rotate it slightly as you are cur as we are cloning now up here there is the rotation um, dialog and you can type in how much you want to rotate it but you can also do it with the left and right arrow keys on a keyboard for a computer and a PC and a Mac. I don't know how this would work on an iPad um, but I'm guessing there is possibly some sort of shortcut for an iPad f for doing this. Um, so you can use the left and right arrow keys. Now I don't know whether you can alter the amount it moves but it does move in five degree jumps every time you press the left or right arrow key. So if you want less than five or more, you know, slightly if you want it six degrees, you'd have to come up here and type it in. But so let us resample this area here. And I'll do the first clone and then I'll move to the next area and I just want to alter this slightly so I'm going to press the right arrow key first and I'm going to press it three times as you can see that is making it sort of curve downwards so I'll come back to where it was and then curve it up just the once that's using the left arrow key and 
just from that slight adjustment you can see that I've made a slightly better job of that let's make this let's try another area here again press the alt key and this is not so bad not, I didn't have to alter the rotation on that one let's try this bit I might just need to alter this slightly so I'm going to press the left arrow key just at once yeah, so I mean I'm not doing it very well I could probably use a smaller brush but I'm doing it as quickly as possible now you do need to remember to reset these back to where they were it would help um, if I remember correctly this was on one uh, or zero I can't remember now one but the scale was a hundred so again I will sample from there by pressing the alt key and already you can see that it doesn't quite line up let me just rotate that slightly and rotate it once more that's probably too much let's, let's change that rotation we're going to drop this down rather than five degrees we're going to come down to um, let's try three 53 try that again yeah, so you can either type it in or use the left and right arrow keys to rotate where you are cloning from and obviously do a better job than I have now before I do go as you, you can see that's how that works there is also this option here which is scale at a hundred percent now where you can see the little cross that's slightly to the left of where the brush circle is that is where we are sampling from if you press the up and down arrow keys you can move that cross and where you sample from again it sort of does it in five um, pixel jumps so you can either move the sampling point with the up and down arrow or you can move the angle of the brush with the left and right arrow keys but if you want to get back to where you, they should be scale is a hundred and I think I was wrong when I said one, I think it's zero um, for the rotation so it will always sample from the right area like that if, if you leave it on that zero and one hundred go back on this and just rotate this um, let's try the left arrow key no that's the wrong way maybe I just need to rotate this down by a couple so that would be 358 it is a lot more labor intensive than the image painting brush but if you've got a, a difficult image like a curve that you're trying to follow and obviously do it a bit better than I have because I freely admit that I am struggling a bit here but with a bit more practice and the use of the rotation and possibly the scale 
you could end up cloning this curves and get rid of this scratch far easier than trying to use the in painting brush tool so hopefully this has answered the question that I was asked and hopefully it will help especially newbies to understand what the clone brush will do and what it can do I mean, obviously there are a lot more options up here which I haven't gone into we're just I was just looking at rotating the brush head to try and get a better clone of an area that is curved so thank you for watching and goodbye